Imagine walking into a dealership, but instead of cars lined up with fuel tanks or charging stations, you see vehicles that promise to run endlessly without ever stopping at a gas pump or plugging into the wall. That is exactly what just happened in Africa. For the first time in history, a free energy car showroom has officially opened its doors, and the world can't stop talking about it. The grand opening. The event took place in a city buzzing with excitement. Crowds gathered outside the sleek, futuristic building where banners proudly displayed the phrase, Welcome to the future of driving. Inside, journalists, engineers, car enthusiasts, and even government officials walked to the glass doors, greeted by a stunning line of shiny, self-powered cars, each promising to rewrite the rule book of transportation. Cameras flashed, reporters whispered in disbelief, and the hum of curiosity filled the air. The vehicles sat there, not plugged in, not fueled up, just standing proudly as if daring the skeptics to question them. The technology on display. Each car showcase at the showroom was powered by Maxwell Chikambutso's groundbreaking self-power technology. Unlike conventional EVs, there were no visible charging ports, no bulky fuel tanks, and no solar panels. Instead, under the hood was a mysterious free energy system, a proprietary generator that claimed to draw power from electromagnetic fields and convert into endless usable energy. Engineers from around the world bent over these vehicles, checking the dashboards, the systems, even the undercarriage. Some shook their heads in disbelief. Others took notes feverishly, trying to figure out what made these cars tick. The world's reaction. The reactions have been nothing short of explosive. Tesla engineers, after being invited to the event, were reportedly stunned. One insider claimed, If this works at scale, the EV industry, as we know it, could collapse overnight. American automotive experts expressed skepticism, but couldn't deny what they saw with their own eyes. European media outlets described the opening as a defining moment in history, where Africa didn't follow innovation but led it. And across social media, the hashtag, hashtag Free Energy Revolution began trending within hours, with millions of people around the globe sharing clips and reactions. Test drives begin. But the most jaw-dropping moment came when the company handed the keys to a few lucky test drivers. The cars rolled out of the showroom smoothly, gliding down the streets without a sound, without a single drop of fuel, and without being plugged in beforehand. Spectators gasped. Some applauded. Others pulled out their phones, recording what they called the world's first live proof of a mass-produced free energy car. The vehicles didn't just move, they performed. Acceleration was instant, handling felt futuristic. And according to early test data, the cars could drive indefinitely without needing to stop for fuel or charging. Global aftershocks begin. The ripple effects were immediate. Within hours of the test drives, international news outlets from CNN to Al Jazeera ran breaking headlines. Africa unveils the world's first free energy car showroom. Stock markets reacted sharply. Shares of major oil corporations dipped as traders feared the dawn of an unstoppable energy revolution. Electric vehicle companies, from Tesla to BYD, saw their investors questioning how they would compete with a car that never needed charging in the first place. Meanwhile, in Detroit, the heart of America's auto industry, executives scrambled into emergency meetings. Engineers were ordered to analyze every single frame of footage from Africa's test drives, desperate to understand what Maxwell's invention meant for the global market. Governments take notice. But it wasn't just corporations that were shaken. Governments, too, began reacting. European Union ministers debated whether this technology could be integrated into their green energy goals. Middle Eastern oil-producing nations quietly expressed concern, knowing that if free energy cars scale worldwide, their oil-driven economies could collapse. And in Washington, whispers emerged that officials were monitoring the situation closely. Some feared this invention could shift the balance of global power, putting Africa at the forefront of an energy revolution, the People's Revolution. Back in Africa, the atmosphere was electric, literally and metaphorically. Outside the showroom, ordinary people lined up just to touch the cars, to take selfies, to say they had witnessed history firsthand. A young college student, staring in awe at the vehicles, told reporters, For the first time, we don't have to import the future. The future is here, and it started in Africa. 
farmers, taxi drivers, students, and families all began imagining what life would look like when transportation no longer came with the crushing burden of fuel costs. For many, this wasn't just about cars. It was about freedom. Tesla and American engineers react publicly. Tesla finally broke its silence. In a carefully worded statement, a spokesperson admitted, if Maxwell self-powered technology is scalable, it could mark a paradigm shift for the automotive industry. We are studying the developments closely, but behind the scenes, whispers painted a different picture. Engineers were reportedly stunned, some even skeptical, questioning how the cars were generating such consistent power without conventional charging. Yet, the reality was undeniable. The cars were moving, accelerating, and functioning without any visible source of external energy. American engineers at MIT and Stanford began calling for joint research projects, while others insisted on replicating the technology to verify its authenticity. The big question, as the day ended and the showroom closed its doors, one big question remained hanging in the air. How long before the rest of the world can actually buy one of these cars? Already, rumors spread of pre-orders being considered, with potential deals in Europe, Asia, and South America. The possibility that this African invention might soon roll into garages across the globe was no longer a dream. It was fast becoming reality. Whispers of resistance. Even as excitement soared, dark clouds began to gather behind closed doors. In oil-rich capitals, meetings stretched late into the night. Energy lobbyists, long accustomed to controlling the global economy, began plotting. One leaked memo from an oil consortium read, if this technology spreads unchecked, the global demand for oil could collapse by 70% within a decade. Immediate countermeasures must be taken. Back in Africa, word of these secret meetings reached journalists. Rumors spread that attempts might soon be made to discredit Maxwell's invention, to paint it as a hoax, or even sabotage his team's progress. The showroom under siege media frenzy. Within days, the African showroom had become a pilgrimage site for journalists, scientists, and even spies posing as tourists. Drones hovered overhead, capturing images of the cars from every angle. Engineers walked around with hidden scanners, trying to pick up any trace of how the vehicles powered themselves. Maxwell himself, calm but defiant, told a gathering of reporters, This is not just about cars. This is about rewriting the rules of energy, forever. And no one can stop what has already begun. The crowd erupted in applause, but the tension was unmistakable. The world was now watching, and not everyone wanted this revolution to succeed. Ordinary people start to dream. While the powerful schemed, ordinary people embraced hope. In Kenya, taxi drivers began pooling money, hoping they could one day afford one of Maxwell's cars and never again pay for fuel. In India, farmers posted online, If this reaches us, we could run tractors without ever buying diesel again. In Brazil, environmental activists called it the single biggest weapon against climate change humanity has ever seen. Suddenly, it wasn't just an African story. It was a global people's movement in the making. American engineers face a dilemma. Back in the U.S., engineers found themselves at a crossroads. Some were inspired, pushing for collaboration with Maxwell. Others feared it would make their existing research obsolete. A private recording leaked from a think tank meeting captured one American engineer saying, If we ignore Maxwell's invention, history will forget us. But if we embrace it, we may just witness the birth of a world without fuel dependency. The words echoed like a prophecy, and the choice was clear. Global powers react more aggressively. Then came the unexpected. Reports surfaced of cyber attacks targeting Maxwell's company servers. Data breaches attempted hacks, and suspicious drones near the factory began raising alarms. Maxwell's team went on high alert, doubling security around the showroom, encrypting every file. Yet, one of his close aides whispered to a reporter, they're afraid, and when the powerful are afraid, they fight dirty. The first act of sabotage. It began quietly. One night, as security guard patrolled the perimeter of the free energy car showroom, the lights suddenly flickered. Surveillance cameras went dark for exactly two minutes. By morning, engineers discovered that one of the demo cars had been tampered with, not destroyed, but subtly rewired, 
as if someone wanted to malfunction during the next public test drive. When reporters asked Maxwell about it, he simply smiled. If they thought this would stop us, they underestimated Africa. For every car they try to sabotage, ten more will rise. The audience inside the showroom cheered, but behind the scenes, the tension had grown sharper. The unexpected ally. While Maxwell faced threats, something unexpected happened. A group of European scientists, quietly disillusioned by corporate pressure, reached out to him. They offered encrypted communication and advanced counter-surveillance tools, vowing to protect his work. One of them said, Your fight is no longer just Africa's fight. It belongs to all humanity. Let us help. For the first time, Maxwell realized that his invention was no longer a local dream. It was becoming a global rebellion against energy dependency. The first international buyers arrived. Soon, armored convoys began arriving at the African showroom. Not with weapons, but with diplomats, investors, and curious buyers. A delegation from South America was the first to step forward. They had endured decades of oil struggles and wanted freedom. Their spokesperson declared, We want to place an order not just for cars, but for buses, trucks, and tractors. Our people deserve this technology. The announcement sent shockwaves worldwide. If governments began buying directly, it would bypass traditional oil cartels completely. The media explosion. The showroom became the most live-streamed location on Earth. Tens of millions tuned in daily. Hashtags like hashtag free energy now and hashtag Africa leads the future trended across every platform. CNN called it a technological Pearl Harbor. Al Jazeera called it a gift from Africa to the world. Meanwhile, oil markets began to panic. Prices dropped overnight as traders whispered, What if this isn't just hype? What if it's real? The turning point. The pressure mounted. Rumors emerged that certain world leaders were preparing emergency policies, new energy taxes, restrictions on free energy cars, even threats of embargoes on countries that embrace Maxwell's invention. But Maxwell, standing before thousands of the showroom, raised his voice. They cannot stop the future. This is not a machine. It is freedom. And freedom is not for sale. The crowd roared so loudly, it drowned out the sound of helicopters circling overhead. The global showdown. The day of the grand demonstration arrived. World leaders, engineers, journalists, and millions watching online all held their breath. Maxwell's free energy car was about to drive across two African nations without stopping, without charging, without fuel. Security was tighter than ever. Drones hovered overhead. International observers checked every bolt of the vehicle, and Maxwell himself, calm but defiant, slid into the driver's seat. The car started with a silent hum. No roar, no smoke, just pure, clean energy. It crossed deserts, highways, and bustling cities. Children ran alongside cheering. Farmers stopped their work to wave. Even skeptics in Europe and America sat glued to their screens, unable to deny what they were seeing. The breaking point. Halfway through the journey, a sudden attempt was made to jam the car systems. Signals tried to interfere, but the free energy engine didn't rely on satellites or external power. It kept moving, immune to sabotage. By the time Maxwell arrived at the second country's capital, tens of thousands filled the streets, chanting, Africa leads the future. Global repercussions. That night, the world changed. Oil prices collapsed by 30% in a single day. Electric car companies were forced into emergency meetings. Politicians who once laughed at Maxwell now begged for licensing deals. But Maxwell stood firm. He addressed the world with a single message, broadcast live from the showroom. This technology is not for corporations. It is not for governments to monopolize. It is for the people. From Africa to the world, we are free. The legacy? Within weeks, the first free energy car dealerships opened not just in Africa, but in South America, Asia, and the Middle East. Families who once couldn't afford gasoline now own cars that ran forever. Villages without electricity powered their homes through adapted versions of the same technology. And Maxwell? He became more than an inventor. He became a symbol. Proof that innovation could rise from unexpected places. Proof that Africa was no longer consumer of the world's technology, but the leader of the next industrial revolution. The future unfolds. 
The camera pans across the African showroom at night. Hundreds of self-powered cars gleam under the lights. Ready for buyers. A little boy presses his hands against the glass, eyes wide with wonder, whispering to his mother, Mama, one day I will drive one of those.